the Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills, Science, Research and Small Business has the call. Thank you very much, Speaker. I very much welcome this contribution to debate, this opportunity to debate small business policy in this House. And of course, Speaker, this is my first contribution to the House as Minister for Small Business. And I want to say what a great honour it is to represent small business at the Cabinet table, Madam Speaker. Now, unfortunately, we just heard the contribution from the leader of the National Party, which was dripping in negativity, in rhetoric. 2013 was going to be the year of the positive agenda, of the policies being rolled out. 2013 was going to be the year where we saw the alternative government put its plans forward. Day two. Not going very well so far. More negativity, more rhetoric, not backed up by the facts. Now, of course, the most important thing for small business is a good economy. The most important thing for small business is the economic fundamentals. When an economy goes into recession, it's small business which pays the price. If we'd followed the advice of those opposite and not stimulated the economy, it would have been small businesses going to the wall. We on this side of the House know that when there's a downturn, sometimes big businesses can have enough in reserve, can make cuts, they can get through. But small business just doesn't have that capacity. And when there's a recession, it's small business that pays the price. And keeping Australia out of recession meant that small business didn't pay that price in Australia. No thanks to the opposition who opposed the stimulus and whose policies would have seen Australia go into, into recession. So we will not be lectured by this opposition about small business when they wanted to see policies put in place, which would have seen our country follow the rest of the world into recession. Ask a small business, would you prefer to be operating in the Australian economy today or in Europe or in the United States? And you'll get a very clear answer. You'll get a clear answer because of the policies this government's put in place. Our economy is growing solidly. We've growth around trend at 3.1 per cent, inflation at 2.2 per cent, unemployment at 5.4 per cent, one of the lowest in the industrialised world, and interest rates, official interest rates at 3 per cent, despite the rhetoric of the Leader of the Nationals lower than at any time, at any time under the Howard government. Now again, this House understands that small business, this side of the House understands that small business is usually heavily geared and that interest rates have a huge effect on their capacity to operate. But it's not just about the big picture, as important as the big picture is. The big picture of the strength of the economy is the most important thing for small business, and that is where this government has a very proud record indeed in terms of the strength of our economy. But it's also about policies for small business. And I'm delighted, Speaker, to have the opportunity, Deputy Speaker, to have the opportunity in the House today to contrast those policies, the policies of the government and the policies of the opposition. Let's go first to tax. Now, of course, this government has lifted the tax three threshold, which means that we have lifted many small businesses out of paying tax, those unincorporated businesses that are below the tax uh, free threshold. And we've reduced the tax burden on those unincorporated businesses. And of course, this government has introduced the loss carryback, which allows companies which make a profit one year and a loss the next to claim a refund on the tax paid. This is not just something that gives assistance to companies that have made a loss, which is very important, but it's something which encourages companies to take risks, to innovate, to improve their productivity. It's something we're very proud of. And of the 110,000 businesses which will benefit from this initiative, most of those will be small businesses. And of course, we've introduced the instant asset tax write-off, which allows small businesses to claim a deduction for the full value of each new asset costing up to $6,500 after one year. Not only a tax benefit, but a red tape benefit. The Leader of the Nationals talked about us piling red tape on. Well, this is an initiative which takes red tape away, because instead of depreciating something over a long period of time and having to do, do it over a long period of time, it's an instant write-off. I'm not sure the opposition understands it. It is an instant write-off, not only reducing the tax burden but reducing the red tape burden. Now, these are, these are some of the positive things the government has done, but the contrast is even greater than that. 
because this opposition has a policy of scrapping measures which were introduced along with the carbon price and the minerals resource rent tax, like these. Like these measures. This is an opposition which will increase the tax on small business by abolishing these measures. This is an opposition which will go to an election with a policy of increasing tax on small business. Now, this is not an opposition which is in any position to lecture the government about the tax burden on small business. Now, the Leader of the Nationals could have taken the opportunity to use the MPI in this spirit of a positive agenda to explain to small businesses of Australia why. Why will they abolish these tax breaks which this government has introduced? Perhaps the Shadow Minister for Small Business might like to do it in his contribution. Explain their policy to Australia's small business people. Why will you abolish these tax uh, cuts which have been introduced by this government? And last year I saw and we all saw an extraordinary scene in this House, something I must say, Deputy Speaker, I never thought I would see in my time in the House of Representatives. We saw the Liberals and the Nationals walking into this House to vote against a corporate tax cut. And we saw them walk into the other place to vote with the Greens to stop that corporate tax cut. The Leader of the Nationals has the hide to lecture us about the Greens when he voted with them to stop Australia's businesses, including incorporated small businesses, getting a tax cut. He is in no position to lecture anybody in this House. The Shadow Minister for Small Business is in no position to lecture anybody in this House. Nobody on that side is in a position to lecture us about tax on small business when they have a policy of abolishing our tax breaks and opposing a reduction in the corporate tax rate. Instead, they have to hide. To, to continue with this campaign of fear about the carbon price, which has been shown again and again to be based on falsities. Now, I do want to talk about some of the other key initiatives and positive initiatives that this government has introduced in relation to small business. Some of these, some would say, are symbolic, but I don't think they are. The fact that we have a cabinet minister representing small business is important. The last time it happened was just before John Howard took the small business portfolio out of cabinet in 2001. Out of cabinet in 2001, and this prime minister has brought small business back into the cabinet, so that when the big decisions are being made around the cabinet table, there's somebody looking out for small business. Now, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. I hope. I hope the uh, shadow minister for small business has some confidence that he would enter the cabinet in an Abbott government. I'm not sure that he would. But I hope for his sake that he would, in that unfortunate event, in that unfortunate event of an Abbott government. Now, now, Deputy Speaker, the other thing, the other thing about it is, of course, this government has introduced a small business commissioner. This is something that Labor governments have done around the country. The first small business commissioner was introduced by the Victorian Labor government in 2003, and this Labor government has introduced a small business commissioner in 2013 an advocate for small business. Now, we do see these around the country in different states, but uh, my Queensland colleagues would be able to remind the House that we see it in every state, or certainly not, in Queensland, where the Newman government abolished the Office of Small Business Commissioner. Abolished the Office of Small Business Commissioner. You dare say that you would be the friends of small business. You dare say that you are the friends of small business when a state Liberal National Party government abolishes the advocate for small business in their first year in office. Now, there are other matters to be discussed in relation to small business, Deputy Speaker. And of course, there is one very important one. For me, it's the kicker, Deputy Speaker. It's, the, it's one of the, the most positive small business policies that you could think of. It's called the National broadband network. Now, we all know the Leader of the Opposition has had some pretty shocking interviews on the 7.30 report. There was the one where he said, the only things you can believe are the things he writes down. That was a good one. And then there was the one where he said he hadn't read the press release from BHP about a mine closure that he'd been talking about all day and he wasn't sure of his facts. But in the top three is that 7.30 interview from the election campaign where the Leader of the Opposition said 
The NBN was all about letting kids download movies more quickly, and therefore it wasn't a priority. In that one interview, he showed that he does not understand the importance of the national broadband network for Australia, for our economy, and for small business. And for small business. Now, the NBN is very popular with small business because they know what the Leader of the Opposition does not, that it enables them to grow their markets, that you could be a small business anywhere in Australia, in any electorate in Australia, any town, and you could have all of Australia as your market and, indeed, Deputy Speaker, all of the world. All of the world. The member for Groom understands, but the Leader of the Opposition does not, does not understand how important the NBN is for Australia's small business. And of course, an Abbott government will see the uh, national broadband network stopped cold dead. It's not just me who says this, Deputy Speaker. There are small businesses around the country who have said how much they benefit from the national broadband network, who have said how much they appreciate the benefits brought to them by the NBN. They've said that it reduces their costs, that they have a larger market that they are able to sell across the country. And they will be very disappointed to see the National Broadband Network stopped on the election of an Abbott government. Honourable members know from their small businesses, those honourable members who have the NBN coming through their electorate will have had their chambers of commerce saying how great it is. Those honourable members who have to wait a little longer will have had their chambers of commerce saying, please, can we get it quicker? Yes. We'll get it not at all if under a Liberal government. Again, they have the hide to lecture us. Now we have a pattern here, Deputy Speaker, across all these things. It is a pattern of rhetoric about small business. The Liberal Party claiming to be the friends of small business but delivering nothing for small business, taking small business for granted. And this is not just my view, Deputy Speaker. It's also the view of the body which represents small business, COSBOA, the Council of Australian Small Business Associations. This is what COSBOA said in their recent publication, COSBOA, the year 2012 and what we expect in 2013. There's sections under 2012, the year that was. There's engagement with the government. I'll come back to that. Engagement with the opposition. And this is what they say. And this is a quote. We stated our concern last year that there are still people in the Liberal Party who believe that all small businesses vote for the coalition and therefore there is no need to do anything special for the small business community. We still have that concern. It is time for the whole of the coalition to recognise that small businesses and independent contractors are in fact a mainstay of the economy and need fairness and transparency in the policy process. That's not a ringing endorsement. Deputy Speaker. That is the small business community of Australia saying we are being taken for granted by the opposition, by the alternative government. It is the peak body for small business saying we have had enough of the lip service. We have had enough of the rhetoric. We have had enough of the small talk. We want to see some action and some policies. And they've got none and they're very concerned and they will continue to say it. This is what they said about the government. We've been in regular contact with the small business minister and his advisers and expect this to continue. The level of interest and dialogue is welcome and is recognition from the government that we count as citizens of Australia. A bit of a different tone when talking about the government's approach because COSBOA, as the peak body representing small business in Australia, has recognised the concrete measures taken by the government to actually help small business. We don't just talk about it. We don't just pay them lip service. We don't insult them with cheap rhetoric. We don't mislead people about vilification, as the Leader of the Nationals did at the dispatch box a few moments ago and could not back it up with one single fact, could not back it up with one single example. He was strong on rhetoric as always, as is the entire opposition, full of rhetoric when it's about small business, happy to pay them lip service, happy to insult them, but not happy to give them concrete policies. Well, as, I'm, as, as long as I'm the Minister for Small Business serving in the Cabinet, as long as the Labor Party is in office, we will talk about small business, we will talk about their importance to the economy, we will talk about them being the engine room of growth, but we'll do something more than that. We'll back it up with policies, we'll back it up with support, 
will back it up with action. We'll actually do something for small business in this country, something the Liberal Party has not done and, under this Leader of the Opposition, continues not to do. Order, I call the 